Hey everybody and welcome back to Mike Reed's Katow Shoujo. Last episode we realized Emmy was sick and we got teased by Lily. Bitch. Doesn't take long to get to the dormitory and make my way to Emmy's room. Standing outside her door, I suddenly pause. What if she's resting? I hate to wake her up, especially if she's still feeling ill. Then again, if she sleeps all day, then it could throw off her sleeping schedule. This fucking guy. But rest is important if you're ill, isn't it? I can't decide what to do, so I settle for standing outside the door looking like an idiot. Then I hear Emmy's voice from behind the door. Thanks for your concern, but I really am doing okay. Is she talking to me? See you at practice tomorrow. Guess not. Still, clearly she's not asleep, so I can knock without worrying. So why this clenched feeling in my gut? I wasn't nervous about dropping by the other day, so why today? Granted, I still haven't really had time to figure out this newfound interest in Emmy's well-being. I don't have a lot of experience in the matter, of course, but certainly this seems to go beyond feelings of mere friendship. But could I take that step? Could I even bring myself to risk what I have right now? I mean, it's enough to be friends with her, isn't it? Either way, shouldn't I just open the door and see how she's doing? That's why I came here, right? What if she's not dressed yet? The image that flashes through my mind causes my heart to skip a beat, literally. I should probably not ever think about those thoughts again. Not if I want to avoid a heart attack. I suddenly realize I'm still standing in the hallway looking like an idiot. Emmy still seems to be in the middle of a conversation, but I knock anyway. Hopefully she won't mind the interruption. You worry too much. Come in! The door's unlocked! So it is. I open the door and step in, which is about where my thought process comes to a grinding halt. <laughs> Emmy is sitting up in bed, her hair tussled from a day spent asleep. I think this is the first time I've seen her without those familiar beads in her hair. Her gym shirt and bloomers, obviously hastily put on before I came in, are creased and folded from less than proper storage. Her legs lay there on the sheets, or lack thereof. I've never seen any without prosthetics before, yet here she is, slender legs termi yeah, terminating the in stumps just before her, oh my god, just below her knees. But as odd as the sight is, I find myself more captivated by everything north of the waist. It seems that Emmy had finished her conversation with whoever was on the phone with her, and is now watching my reaction closely out of her one open eye as she wipes sleep from the other. Her expression, far from being embarrassed, is rather one of surprisingly wide yawn. One perhaps appropriate for such a small mouth. A grin that is for a brief moment seems almost flirtatious tugs at the corner of her mouth as she takes the sight of me in. Uh, I can do nothing but remain in a state fluctuating between fear, confusion, and not a little bit of lust. Emmy hastily sweeps her hair out of her eyes, fixing it back into place before addressing me. You seem a bit caught off guard, Asal. A wave of laughter erupts from her and I find myself grinning and rubbing the back of my head ruefully. Sorry, I've just never seen someone so dis yeah, disheveled look Oh my god. There's never seen someone so disheveled look so attractive. Never seen you without your legs on. Never seen you look so Um, sorry. Emmy giggles again and moves up to sit up a little straighter. I'm caught up in the movements of her Oh my fucking god. I'm caught up in the movements of her shirt, very nearly losing myself. I was wondering what your reaction would be. The nurse called and told me you were going to drop by, you see. And I know you haven't seen me, well, you know, without legs. I respond in a tone of casual surprise. Oh, you don't have them on? I didn't notice. Here's naturally that short. This is almost the truth. I very nearly didn't. I'm not trying to be suave or anything, mind you. Somehow I think Emmy would get offended by that. Instead, she sticks her tongue out at me and chucks a pillow at my head. Ass. 
I deftly catch the pillow and carefully aim before throwing. Emmy laughs and rolls to one side, dodging my shot. The shifting of her eye oh my fuck the shifting of her shirt distracting me enough so that the next thrown pillow hits me right between the eyes. Oof. I retaliate, of course. Once I've retaliated twice, well, a war was bound to break out sooner or later. And really, when Emmy appears to have far better aim than me, well, it was just a matter of time before I'd have to resort to a suicidal charge. Gotcha. Oh, cool, Batman. Unless the charge was accomplished, well, of course I'd have to wrestle the pillows away from her. And with that kind of struggle, of course we'd wind up in this sort of position. Oh dear. And so I find myself staring down at her from my position atop her. She's grinning, eyes sparkling with amusement, maybe a little sweaty now from our tussle. You wanna tussle? Her chest is heaving up and down, sucking in air. A small bit of my brain that is not currently enraptured by the sight and the smell of her observes that she must still be ill, because her stamina is not what it should be. We stay that way for a while. I'm not sure how long, because everything seems to go fuzzy. Everything that isn't her, anyway. Her eyes meet mine, and, and deep inside them, I almost catch a glimpse of... What? Fear? Longing? Hope? Emmy? A call suddenly convulses her, and I'm almost stumbling in my haste to get off, to apologize for everything. Sorry, I shouldn't have... It's fine, it's fine. She gives me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. So what brings you here? She's still breathing hard, and that causes her voice to shake slightly. Well, before I was so rudely assaulted by pillows, I came here to see how you were doing. More Batman! This earns me another shove, and I very nearly fall off her bed. Emmy's eyes sparkle again, and I wonder how I never noticed how attractive they are before. Consumed with worry, were you? Her tone is mocking, haughty, teasing. She throws her arms across her forehead and dramatically grins. Oh my god. She throws her arm across her forehead dramatically, grin still apparent from underneath. Couldn't bear the thought of me laying deathly ill. As we both recover from our brief, brief wrestling match, Emmy appears to fall back on teasing me. Well, I wouldn't say consumed with worry, but after you didn't show up this morning like a total wuss, Emmy pouts, crossing her arms uh, petulantly and sticking her tongue, uh, sticking her lower lip out. It's not my fault. Nurse wouldn't allow it. Sure, he wouldn't. I completely believe you. Emmy sticks her tongue out again. You're such a jerk, Sal. So how was your day then, eh? Did you enjoy slacking off? Not really, the phone woke me up pretty early on. The phone? Yeah, the captain of the team called to make sure I was doing okay. Also to let me know it was okay to skip practice. Good, at least she wasn't alone all day. Someone checked up on her. But I can't ever think that it should have been me. Oh, that's good. He really keeps an eye on you, huh? Emmy shrugs. It's his job. Part of being the captain means you know where your team members are when they're not in school. So I guess it was nice of him to call, huh? Yep, sure was. Not jealous at all. Emmy yawns and shimmies down into a more comfortable position. So how was your day? Kind of uneventful, you know? I went ahead and ran by myself and talked to the nurse about how you were doing. And my day went on. I meander through the day's events, none of which are particularly engrossing. That's when I'm distracted by an arm finding its way across my waist. It seems that Emmy fell asleep while I was talking, so I draw her blanket to cover us. <laughs> You're so boring, she falls asleep on you. And I- oh my god. You're weird. She's rolled over on her side, and now one leg is thrown over my legs, effectively trapping me. Hey. Seems a shame to wake her, but I have things to do. I gently shake her, but in response she only tightens her arms, grip on me, and sighs a little. My resistance to this position crumbles rather quickly. The feeling of her body breathing steadily is both calming and incredibly stimulating at the same time. My breathing cannot decide if it wants to relax or speed up. 
relaxation wins, and I find myself putting an arm around Emmy. I think I'm in love. The words slip out and hang in the air unnoticed. At least I hope they've gone unnoticed. Emmy whimpers weakly through her dreams, and her grip suddenly tightens again. For the first time since I've known her, I see tears running down Emmy's face. It feels like my heart is about to break. I instinctively tighten my own grip and stroke her hair in what I hope is a soothing manner. Words of comfort, meaningless in the situation, spring to mind. Maybe I should wake her. Are you supposed to wake people having nightmares? I can't for the life of me remember. Uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. You can wake up sleepwalkers, you can wake up sleep talkers, you can wake up people in good dreams, you can wake up people in bad dreams. Only one of those four things are going to be pissed off at you. Uh, the decision is taken away from me when Emmy suddenly jerks awake with a cry. Dad! Ah, PTSD. This is m more than I think I want to hear without her knowing. I quickly sit upright and gently shake her shoulder to stir her. Hey, you okay? What a silly question. Huh? What? It's how? She shakes her head as if to clear it and quickly wipes her eyes. You had a nightmare, I think. Emmy shudders again and glances up at me a little cautiously, as if unsure whether or not she's actually up. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Wanna talk about it? Huh? A speedy internal debate seems to be going on in her head, which resolves itself with a shrug. Yeah, I don't really remember much of it. I'm pretty sure she's lying to me, but somehow I don't think I should press the issue. Emmy shudders again and turns towards me, looking a little sheepish. Sorry for falling asleep on you like that. I keep my voice as soothing as I can. Hey, don't worry about it. You've been ill. Yeah, I guess that cold medicine's just made me a little drowsy. Guess so. Emmy does not strike me as the sort of person who falls asleep at the drop of a hat. Rin, maybe, but Emmy appear Emmy's far too energetic. Emmy gives a half smile at my response, and then just like that, she's back to her old self. Well, prepare yourself for tomorrow morning, Sal. We'll have to go twice as hard to make up for today. But I went running this morning. No excuse. Fine. I'll be ready for you. Emmy nods satisfied. Good. I take this as my cue to exit. Well, I better get going, especially if I want to get enough sleep for tomorrow. Emmy hops off the bed and head... Uh, yeah, Emmy hop... hop. God damn it. I hop off the bed and head for the door. Not Emmy. Hey, Sal. Huh? I pivot neatly on my heel and face Emmy. She opens her mouth and says something, and then in another fair... Ah. And then in another first, I see her falter slightly. She closes her mouth and opens it again. Thanks. For dropping by, I mean. You're kind of the first visitor I've ever had who wasn't Rin. Now that's surprising. I would figure that Emmy have people dropping by all the time. She's certainly popular enough, or so I thought. Always talking to people in the hallways. Emmy hesitates again. And thanks for staying around after I... well... A look of pain flits across her face. You know... It helped. She brightens back up and waves cheerily at me. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you later. Just about to exit the door when something makes me turn around again. Hey, Emmy. Huh? Anytime you need to talk, just let me know, okay? Emmy seems taken aback by this offer. Her grin gets even wider. Sure thing, Asal. See you in the morning. I exit Emmy's room with my head in a whirl. Should I have even left? Is she really okay? I want to turn around and march back down the hallway, open the door, and tell her. Tell her I love her. Tell her I think she's beautiful. Tell her that I'll be there when she needs me. I want to stay with her, to hold her close as she falls back asleep. How many nights has she woken up like that? I want to find that nobody's there. I want to be that person she can be with when that happens. 
So I thought I know. We don't know each other that well, do we? The whole idea while exhilarating also makes me feel worry. Worry, perhaps, that I'd overstep my bounds. And now, to add my troubles, it seems as if Emmy herself already has an interest in someone else. The track captain of hers who seems so interested in her well-being. True, I've only seen the two of them together a few times, but that doesn't change the fact that they seem better suited to one another. There's really nothing to be done about that. I need to take my mind off this whole situation. I've got homework to do. Maybe that'll distract me. Doubt it. I'm calling it an episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed.